Hey everyone, welcome from the sawmill. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, recoil anticipation and some things that might help you um, get over that, uh, which is a, a normal response to a very abnormal thing, a controlled explosion happening not far from your face while you're shooting a pistol or maybe even a rifle. I'm gonna show you a couple tips and tricks and hopefully help you with this. Anytime you guys ever wanna come out for a private lesson out here at the sawmill, we do that and we love it and we'd love to help you because someone helped us. So with that being said, uh, one thing you can do is you can make sure your gun is safe and clear and if you're at home you can point it in a safe direction at a wall uh, Preferably not sending rounds through your wall to your neighbor's house, right? So definitely make sure the magazine is out You have visually observed the chamber and you can even tell yourself it's clear uh, After that what you're going to focus on is Pulling that trigger without disturbing the sight channel um, That's what trigger control is right pulling that trigger to a smooth continuous motion to the rear without disturbing the sight channel and get your shot on target. All right, so with that being said, you'll grip the gun. Me being a right-handed shooter, I'd grip it like this. You'll get the proper grip on the pistol, which would be in another video as well that you can talk more in, or learn more in detail about. You'll find your target. Your sights should come up on your target line. Mainly right now, you can focus on your sights because that's what you really care about. You'll find the wall on that trigger where it mechanically stops and breaks the shot. You shouldn't see any input other than maybe some springs in there moving around. Uh, moving that gun at all. All right, so you'll find that wall fast. Really focus on leveling the sights. Just focus on the sights, not necessarily a target behind it. And you know, you do got a pulse because you're not a vampire. Find it and slow, slow, slow break that shot. You're just slowly taking a little bit off the trigger at a time, a micro millimeter, whatever technical term you want to use, and count to 10 Mississippis, whatever you need to do that to offset your brain to really just slowly creep that trigger back after finding the mechanical wall. The mechanical wall on this trigger would be this. I pull the trigger back, it stops slightly. Now from this point on, I would slowly pull that trigger control. That's when it starts right there till you get the click, right? Not disturbing the sight channel. So, fun fact, you'll do that and you'll probably get really good at it through the repetitions. The problem is, is your brain is really smart, right? So you'll know if the gun is not loaded compared to when it is loaded. So if you find yourself going to the range, you've got this great dry fire practice at home, you're just, you're just dry firing, dry firing, you know, getting in there, racking, resetting everything, getting in there, watching, and man, that gun is not moving, sights aren't moving, everything looks really good. You'll get to the range, you might get to send that first round out, and it'll be dead on where you want to hit. And man, I got it. And after that, if you're a right-handed shooter like I am, you'll start maybe seeing those low and to the left. What I typically see uh, with humans is when we get that anticipation, right? We're, we, we drive the gun down because your brain is trying to time the controlled explosion and control the firearm. And at that time, you'll break it down. So that's more what it would look like if you had that recoil anticipation you'd see a little dip. Typically goes down to the left, what I've seen. Um, and I do it too, because I have recoil anticipation. Anybody that says they, do, they don't, man, they're really awesome. But your body naturally start to try to control uh, the recoil and the muzzle flip of the firearm. So um, if I catch myself doing it a little bit at times, I'll go dry if I've got time to train um, and do some dry fire practice and see where I'm at. The key, to when you're on the range and you break those that first shot and you do hit the dead center of that target, awesome. And if you start seeing it low and to the left after that, if you got a range buddy with you, it's phenomenal. Because what they could do is they could take your firearm from you in a safe manner. They can make some noise over here to the side, right? But maybe they take and put an empty magazine in it. Maybe they strip some rounds out of it so there's no rounds in the magazine. Then they hand it back to you don't give you time to visually observe or start looking at the side to see if you see any brass and things of that nature, depending on your gun. If you have a, a nice little sight window in the top uh, to see if there's a round in the chamber and then present that gun. And then all of a sudden, either you get a nice little perfect click and the gun doesn't dip or you go up and there's nothing in that gun. You think there's something in that gun because your brain doesn't know that it's not loaded and boom. And then you get to fixing it again or hand it back to them. Let them do it again, get back on the fire line, and all of a sudden it goes boom, and you hit your target. That is the best way that i found. I'll do that with students. 
I'll have people do it with me. And that's the best way I found to break the recoil anticipation because ultimately your brain's smart, knows when the gun's not loaded versus when it is loaded.